sixth grade, Sierra Elementary, Alamogordo, New Mexico. I was already a member of the Losers Club back in 1988-89. I was Kelly Havey's best friend. She was the girl all the boys desired to date. I was the kind of cute sidekick, awkward with feathered bangs, weird layered perm curls, high water jeans, freckled face and braces. We performed dances in our living room to the Bangles and my parents' at the hop record collection. We shared clothes, exchanged notes, and giggled late into the night. The darkness arrived in her random bullying. BB gun, she called me for big butt and big boobs. This was the song she sang about me once and only once on the playground. She's got the whole world in her butt. <laughs> Jen, you can't take a joke? Fuck you, Kelly. Guilt trips mixed with adoration for one another. We shared best friend necklaces, the one that were cracked in half. You can't hang out with Christy, Jennifer. I thought I was your best friend. Or, oops, I forgot to tell you, I'm hanging out with the cheerleader crowd this weekend, so you can't come over. I was already a member of the Losers Club when it happened. <sighs> yeah. It was after we got back from the book it party at Pizza Hut. The girls, including Kelly and myself, were at my house. Angela, Julie, Jessica, Christy, and alone, I went into the computer room. Detective me, snooping me, found the key. Opened the drawer and life as I knew it was over. Inside my father's collection of lies. Evidence of betrayal. A computer card created for some other woman's birthday. Photographs of them together. My childhood ended. Yet I played the game of hide and secret like my mom did with type 1 diabetes. No one needed to know that my dad cheated. He didn't cheat. I didn't see anything. There were tears that night in the desert. Shocked and conf confused, I briefly let my childhood friends hold me, closed my eyes, and never spoke of it again for 10 years. To lie awake at night, wondering how to confront him. I know the truth, Dad. I found your locked drop drawer of lies. Afraid of losing what I knew, I said nothing. Fear of my parents' marriage ending, I escaped into my bedroom, into the pages of young adult novels. Christopher Pike, Catcher in the Rye, Detailing my own unique life in my journals. Try to appear normal, Jennifer. The only child sighted guide of a blind mother and a cheating father. My, my eyes failed her by not sharing the truth. His lies seeped into my existent, existence in Mr. Duran's homeroom class, where I could not find my homework. Shame was woven into my ple bleached chick denim jeans, self-doubt hairsprayed into my teased hair with wings, even as I got my braces removed and entered junior high. In seventh grade, I began to break out, taste freedom, independence, to look and feel like hot stuff. Junior high meant the blending of all the elementary schools in my town. This meant new friendships and boyfriends. I will not be your boyfriend anymore, or your doormat anymore, Kelly Havey. I loved fantasizing, not studying. Uh, in algebra, I changed a D to a B in typing class. Even though I later quit, I danced ballet and had toe shoes for many years. I played the clarinet and marching band, and we won state champs. Light and darkness coexisted. I found and read my mom's poetry as a teenager. I saw that I could capture, capture specific moments and feelings, emotions in my life. I wrote about my parents, friends at school, White Sands in New Mexico, my boyfriend named Rhett, who in 11th grade, he got struck by lightning and instantly died. My mom's blindness didn't stop her from moving from the East Coast to New Mexico, didn't stop her from working or having a family or enduring pain. My own poems have helped me share personal hurts, observations of the world. I explore a dream of living in other cities, I thought about what it would be like to have other jobs, travel, like a butterfly. I, ha I had the freedom to take off anywhere. In high school, I began eating extra meals, raid the refrigerator before my parents got home after teaching. A whole loaf of banana bread with butter gone. I spared air freshener to cover the scent of microwave chicken cordon bleu. Anticipation was a popular necklace. Anxiety, my favorite accessory. Picking out earrings, I wore my mom's large, gigantic silver hoops. I picked out problems before they could happen. If I could predict them, I could prevent them from happening. 12 to 22, I carried it with me. His infidelity was exposed when I no longer lived in the house or the same town. 
My parents divorced at 22. No secrets, the words came rushing out. I knew he lied, I let him lie, I began to lie. I covered up his lies by not saying a thing. Was I an accomplice to his crime? At 30, I forgave him. In fact, I will never stop encouraging my dad to free himself. He walked me down the aisle. I'm 38 now and still trying to fully forgive myself. Merging 12-year-old Jennifer Dawn with my current self. Sometimes she and I, we hold hands on the walk to the subway. Forgiveness is a consistent tax, task like watering plants in my apartment. I give myself good food, exercise, poetry, open mics, kisses with Chris, laughter. We stroll through the cloisters on a fall Sunday. I take selfies, dance at weddings. I make time for phone calls with my dad. I read my mom's poetry and continue to receive guidance from her, even after her physical death. The truth, my story, is not black and white. I forgive you, Jennifer Dawn. I love you, Jenny Dawn. Thank you.